We know. Woohoo! We're on. Thank you guys. <laughs> that was loud. Did it wake you all up? <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here this morning. Yes, you have chocolate. It's green. You can save it clear to Friday if you want, <laughs> which is St. Patrick's Day, but otherwise, oh, you passed it down? You can pass it to the front. Mike didn't get one. He's not going to get one, but I didn't give him one. <laughs> Kids, stand with me, please. We'll get started. Beautiful, beautiful. Jesus is beautiful. Touching me, causing my eyes to see. Jesus makes beautiful things of my life. Beautiful, beautiful, Jesus is beautiful, and Jesus makes beautiful things of my life. Carefully. Touching me, causing my eyes to see that Jesus makes beautiful things of my life. Oh Lord, you're beautiful. Your face is all. Good morning. We're going to do our memory verse. They moved it, so hopefully I wouldn't forget it doing it. Uh, so we're going to, let's, let's say this together. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. 1 John 4.10. All right. Check that off. <laughs> uh, we don't have too many announcements to go over. Um, there's, I'll let, let you guys read the the bulletin. Um, one thing is that they uh, there's only two more um, times for the that the CAM will be having a song service this Thursday at 7, and the final one will be Tuesday 
uh, the 21st, and uh, some of our CAM people will be leaving in a couple of weeks. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm wondering. We are not looking forward to that day because we have thoroughly enjoyed having uh, the camp people here to be able to worship. Now, some of them will be here a little bit longer, uh, and and but it's it's uh, we appreciate everything that that they have done for our community, uh, the witness that they've been, and just the. Uh, fellowship that we've been able to have uh, with them. So uh, thank you guys. We, we appreciate you. We will be having a work party on Saturday. I don't know what the forecast, as long as it's not snowy. Okay. Well, good. Maybe we'll get one a work party in and get our, our lights down for Christmas. So, um, any other announcements that need to be made? Jam time is Tuesday. Yes. Oh, yeah, it's not in the bulletin. So, thank you. Three o'clock. If you want to help with that. Um. If you have a prayer concern, you can write that out on a prayer card, and during the next songs, I'll go around, and you can hand those to me, and we'll pray about those. And then on Monday for our prayer time, uh, we pray for those requests and then other requests as well. So you're welcome to come Monday at 10, um, where we get together to, to pray, and then some of the... some the ladies write cards to people. So if you want to turn to Matthew chapter 17, Matthew chapter 17, we've been going through uh, Mark Moore's book, Quest 52, um, a 15 minute a day, year long pursuit of Jesus. Uh, and we're on, we are on chapter 17 this week uh, is Jesus really divine, or who is Jesus? Matthew 17, verse 1, six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his, and John, his brother, and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his garments became as white as light. Behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three tabernacles here, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud said, This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down on the ground and were terrified. Jesus came to them and touched them and said, Get up and do not be afraid. And lifting up their eyes, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, saying, Tell the vision to no one until the Son of Man is risen from the dead. And the disciples asked him, why then do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? And the answer said, Elijah is coming and will restore all things. But I say to you that Elijah already came and they did not recognize him, but did, not, but did to him whatever they wished. So also the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he had spoken to them about John the Baptist. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for this day that you have made for us. Thank you that we are created in your image, that you call us to come together to worship you. And we, and we bring you our worship and praise today. May your spirit work in our lives. May we uh, grow in our faith. 
and our trust in you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you'd stand once again with me before the throne of God above. I like the song. Hebrews 10, 19 tells us that we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus. Come into the holy of holies, enter by the blood of the Lamb. Come into his presence with singing, worship at the throne of God. Come into the holy of holies, Enter by the blood of the Lamb. Come into his presence with singing. Worship at the throne of God. Lifting holy hands to the King of kings. Worship Jesus. Worship. Jesus, be thou my 
those are not words that we usually use because they're more like your I always want to call them King James or the <laughs> but it makes you really think about the words that you're hearing and just look at that heart of my heart Lord whatever befall still be my vision O ruler of all I mean I don't talk like that but it really just I mean for me it just makes me go oh, yes I have to stop and think then if it's a song that you just kind of mumble along this one makes you stop and really think of the words and they're powerful. Be my vision. Ugh. Anyway, be seated. That's just me. No, that's enough. Good morning. This morning for our communion meditation, I'd like to uh, read Psalm 27. And um, it's described in my Bible as a psalm of fearless trust in God. If you'd like to read along with me in your Bibles, please, please feel free. I think I'll be reading from the NIV version. Verses 1 through 6, David reminds himself about his dependence upon God's deliverance, for deliverance. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even when I will be, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Now in verses 7 through 12, David speaks with the Lord about his problems. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not turn your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God, my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes. For false, witness rise up, false witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. And then finally, in verses 13 and 14, David speaks about perseverance. 
I will remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. This morning we share the Lord's Supper as a way of remembering that sacrifice in love that Christ showed us to redeem us and to seal us in love for himself. From Matthew 26, 26 through 28. Now while they were eating, Jesus took some bread, and after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And then when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is being poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we seek your face in times of trouble. You are our rock. Teach us your ways. Lead us along paths of righteousness as we wait on you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.
We ask you, Lord, to bless the gifts. We ask you, Lord, to bless the givers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you want to turn to Second Peter chapter 1, verse 16. Peter was one of the people that were, was uh, one of the disciples that Jesus took up on the mountain. And he uh, shares uh, with us um, about what happened there in Second Peter chapter 1, verse 16. For we did not follow cleverly devised tales when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received the honor and glory from God the Father, such an utterance as this was made by, to him by the majestic glory, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. And we ourselves heard this utterance made from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic word made more sure to what you do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star arises in your hearts. We have a number of prayer concerns. Um, we need to be praying for the Mike Long family as he passed away this, this last week. And his service is going to be Saturday at the school. Um, we need to be praying for uh, Gina Mumi as uh, she re-injured her leg. Um, but none of her bones were broken, so uh, that's a praise. And Jack Goodell is doing better, um, but we need to continue praying for his, uh, as he recovers, and uh, he's in, at Avamir uh, Care Center in Salem, hoping to get to come home uh, this week. So, um, we want to pray for our uh, brothers and sisters in China, that uh, may God grant them comfort and boldness as the persecution has inti intensified there. And then Nancy's sister, Linda, is dealing with cancer. So let's bring these before the Lord. Our Father in heaven, we, we thank you for the privilege of coming before your throne room of grace and to being able to bring these that have been mentioned in per, uh, for cons per concerns. We thank you that you are a healer, that you are all-powerful and all-knowing. God, we pray uh, that you would touch your healing hand upon Linda. Ask that uh, you would help her during this time, be with her family. I pray that she'd seek you Father, God, we do pray for our brothers and sisters in China, the persecution that they're, they're going through. I pray that uh, you would give them strength, give them boldness. Uh, God, I, I pray that we might, we might learn from them in the way that we let our light shine. In this, in this community, Lord. So we we uh, we just ask that, uh, despite the persecution, that Your Word would go forward, and many people would come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Father, we pray for the Mike Long family and at, at his passing, and just comfort them, Father. We we just uh, thank you for all the things that he has done for our community and uh, just being praying that uh, you would uh, 
that you would just keep the family in your care. Father, thank you for th that Gina's uh, injuries were, uh, nothing was broken, but help her as she recovers from that and uh, just keep her in your care. Lord, we, uh, I know Jack is uh, missing everybody here and we miss him and praying that uh, um, he'd be able to uh, finish up his, uh, his recovery and to be able to get to come home and, and that we would be able to see him in church once again. Lord, we, uh, God, we pray for our country and we just ask that for revival to take place within the churches that repentance would take place, that we would return to you and to your word, and that we would be a people of your, of, of your word, God, that we would hide it in our hearts so that we would not sin against you. God, open up our hearts to uh, the message today that you will you want us to hear. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A little history uh, in as we take a look at um, who Jesus is. Was he divine? Uh, was he God in the flesh? Uh, and we read from Matthew chapter 17, if you want to turn there. But in chapter 16, we have a couple of things that happen in that Peter uh, has the great confession. Jesus asks the question, who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, well, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Jesus said, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered in verse 16, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. You are the Christ, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Now you have Peter with the great confession, and then right after, then, uh, the next story is Jesus is foretelling about what was going to happen, about his death, about his, that he would be raised on the third day, Peter takes Jesus aside and, and starts to rebuke him. He says, God forbid it, Lord, this shall never happen to you. And Jesus turned to Peter and says, get Behind me, Satan, you are a stumbling block to me, for you are not setting your mind on God's interests, but man's. So we have the great confession of Peter, of, that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Then Jesus explains that he's going to die. But when he, when he proclaimed he was the Christ, the Messiah, Peter was still looking at an earthly kingdom. He was wanting Jesus to become a king, to lead the Israelites out of uh, their slavery to Rome. And so even though he proclaimed who Jesus was, that he was the Christ, the Son of the living God, he still didn't understand what that meant. And when Jesus tried to tell him, he, uh, Peter took him aside, rebuked him. God forbid it, Lord, this shall never happen to you. Interesting that Jesus calls Peter Satan. Get behind me, Satan. You're a stumbling block to me. For you are not setting your mind on God's interests, but man's. I want you to remember that. Not setting your mind 
on God's interests, but man's. We're going to take a look at Romans chapter 12 in a little, little bit um, about our mind, setting our mind. So we have that happen, and yet Jesus invites Peter to go up on the mountain with him six days later. And so Jesus goes up on the mountain with Peter, James, and John. And it says he is transfigured or transformed. It's the, the word get, we get our word metamorphosis is the word that's used here as far as that transformation of Jesus. Six days before, Jesus had called Peter Satan. Get behind me, Satan. You're a stumbling block. And yet, he invites him up to the mountain to pray, to be a witness to the transfiguration. And so, we think about Think about people and our own faith and the times that we stumble, the times that we uh, turn away from God and sin, and yet God still invites us to commune with him. He doesn't give up on us. And in that transfiguration, it says, and his face shone like the sun, and his garments became as white as light. Behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. In one of the other Gospels, it says, uh, I think it's Mark, that says that he was, they were discussing about what was going to take place with Jesus' death. And so here we have Moses and Elijah who appear. This is a great passage of Scripture, full of hope, isn't it? These two great men of the Old Testament, Moses, who led the people out of the promised land, who himself was, uh, uh, um, went up onto the mountain to receive the commandments of God, who had to wear a veil over his face when he came back down from the presence of God because the people could not look upon him. So they're talking, Moses and Elijah. I would have liked to have been there, wouldn't you? To hear that conversation that Jesus had with Moses and Elijah. We just get a, snap, a, 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 a snapshot of, of what took place. But I don't think it was probably just a short conversation. And so the disciples are witnessing this. Uh, and Peter said, because he didn't know what else to say, and it's always Peter who speaks out, right? Even though he didn't know what to say, he was going to blurt something out. And some of you can identify with Peter, can't you? He said, Lord, it is good for us. This is chapter 17, verse 4. It is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three tabernacles or tents here. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He still didn't understand. He was putting Elijah, Jesus up with Elijah and Moses which was a good thing, but he didn't truly understand the divinity of Jesus, who he was. And so while he was still speaking, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice out of the cloud said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down on the ground, and they were terrified. They heard the voice of God, 
they, they saw the transfiguration. They saw Jesus in, all, in, in glory. His face shone like the sun. The garments became white as light. And yet it was from the cloud, the voice speaking about who this was. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. They fell down and were terrified. Realizing they were the presence of God. Jesus came to them and touched them and said, get up. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. They'd been into the presence of God and, and we read, uh, Sharon read the scripture about that we are able to come into the Holy of Holies, into God's presence. Not because of what we've done, not because we deserve it, not because of the good works that we've accomplished, but because of Christ, we can come into the Holy of Holies because of the blood of the Lamb. We don't have to be afraid. And boy, our society needs to hear that message today, doesn't it? There's so much fear. There's so much, uh, so many things going on. People are, don't know what, as far as what tomorrow might bring. And yet Jesus says, hey, don't be afraid. I'm with you. Then Jesus says, hey, he comes down the mountain and says, I don't want you to tell anybody about this. And uh, Mark asked, well, who were they going to tell? Who would believe him of what just happened? And uh, says, tell, tell the vision to no one until the Son of Man has... Uh, has risen from the dead. And then we read from Peter's account from Second Peter chapter 1. And he, he says, and how he words this in, in verse 16, for we have, did not follow cleverly devised tales when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Some people will say, oh, who Jesus is? Well, he was a good moral person. He was a good teacher. The disciples were witnesses of Jesus' majesty. They saw his power. Jesus proclaimed himself to be the Messiah. Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. There's no other way. Does that mean the people who are worshiping Muhammad are wrong? Yes, that's what it means. People who pray to Buddha, they don't have the hope of eternal life. Far too many Christians have accepted the idea of the world of, well, Everybody worships differently, but we worship the same God and go in the same place. But Jesus said that's not true at all. That's why we have support with Wycliffe Bible Translators. That's our mission of the month. 
why we support other missionaries to go out and proclaim the Word of God, to proclaim that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. Verse 17, for when he received honor and glory from God the Father, such an utterance as this was made by him, by the majestic glory, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. If you want to turn to Romans chapter 12, the same word of, about being trans, the transformation we find in Romans chapter 12. Therefore I urge you, verse 1, Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed transformed. That same word. Now it doesn't have quite the same meaning as, the, as we, Jesus and uh, we're not going to glow uh, like the sun. But it says to be transformed by the by what? The renewing of your mind. And if you remember Peter get behind me Satan. Because he had the mind of man, not the mind of God. So how are we transformed in our own life? It says, by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is. That which is good and acceptable and perfect. Be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Unfortunately, lots of minds are not being renewed today. Between uh, social media and uh, so many other things that people are, um, are absorbing through, uh, through that media and filling themselves up with so many other things, but God says that we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. And that renewal of our mind comes in several different ways. It comes through music, if we're singing about God, right? Through worship, it's through reading of God's word, it's through prayer that we renew our mind. And in that renewing of our mind, we're transformed to become like Christ. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 3. I'd encourage you to go home and read that entire chapter. Because it talks about Moses and the, the veil that he had, that he wore. And um, we're, gonna, we're going to start with chapter, verse 7. It says, But if the ministry of death and letters engraved on stones came with glory, so that the sons of Israel could not look intently at the face of Moses because of the glory of his face fading as it was. How will the ministry of the Spirit fail to be even more with glory? So he's talking about the glory of the letter because of the commandments that were given to Moses. For the ministry, verse 9, for the ministry of condemnation has glory, much more does the ministry of righteousness abound in glory. For indeed, what had glory in this case has no glory because of the glory that surpasses it, talking about Christ. 
For if that which fades away was with glory, much more that which remains is in glory. Therefore, having such hope, we use great boldness in our speech and are not like Moses who used to to put a veil over his face so that the sons of Israel would not look intently at the end of what was fading away. But their minds, there again, their minds were hardened. For until this very day at the reading of the Old Covenant, the same veil remains unlifted because it is removed in Christ. But to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their heart. But whoever, whenever a person turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is a spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same Id image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. When we think about our lives, we think about the glory of God, Jesus, the Son of God, seated at the right hand of God. And we're going to go before his presence one day. And we're going to get to spend eternity with him, and we can go before the throne room of grace with boldness. And if we can go through before the throne room of grace with boldness, we should be able to speak with boldness, shouldn't we, here on earth? Not being ashamed of the gospel of God that transforms people's lives. When you think about transformation and, and it's coming, going to be, hopefully it's going to be spring before long. And we know the, that metamorphosis of a, of a caterpillar into a beautiful butterfly is something that is truly amazing. And yet that's exactly the transformation, that change in our own life that God wants to bring about from a person who was selfish, a person who was boastful, a person who uh, hated people to someone who is loving, who is kind, who is generous. That's a transformation, isn't it? And if you remember when, when uh, Peter and John got arrested in the book of Acts and when they're, they're brought be before the authorities, it was that they had been, these two men had been with Jesus. Now, our face does not glow like the sun. With the like the transformation of uh, transfiguration of Jesus. But when people look at us, the way we talk, the way we interact, the things we say, the things that we do, They should be able to say, wow, look at that person. They've been with Jesus. Has your life been transformed? Are you reflecting the glory of God in the things you say and the things you do on this earth? Because it is through God's people how we treat each other, 
how we love each other, that the world is going to know who Jesus Christ is and that they can turn to him. We're going to sing a hymn of invitation this morning. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you can come forward to do that this morning, to be saved of your sins, not because you deserve it, because nobody who's accepted him has we have des ever deserved that forgiveness, but because it's a gift. We are saved by the grace of God. My sins have been forgiven. Your sins can be too. For those who have made that decision, how's your transformation going? Are you reflecting God's glory? Or are there some areas in your life that you just need to spend some time with God and getting right with him? Giving it to him, repenting of sin, praying for boldness so that we might be a great witness in this canyon. Come as we stand and sing. I just ask that you would go before us this week, that uh, you would transform us through the renewing of our mind, and that you would bring people into our lives that we might just love into the kingdom of God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.